quedan sus dedos. Matthew, good job on that, Matt. Let's go ahead and look at uh, 2018-08, the Fisher Pools and the Landscaping. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is another plan development request, but does not have a rezoning associated with it. Um, this is property that may be familiar to you from back in 2014. Um, subject property is four landlocked parcels at 1420 Gornto Road. This is on to the south of Gornto, immediately east of the railroad track. Um, or affectionately known as the Squirrel's Nest, which is the name of the existing business that is there. You may recall from 2014, this receipt plan development approval for that type of uh, retail and office use. Um, the applicant is someone who is proposing to purchase the property um, and redevelop it under a slightly different retail type use, um, but utilizing the CN zoning that is already there um, and develop it as a pool and landscape retail center with some accessory services. Um, the way I described it to you, the work session, if you were to visualize the pool store and Seasons Garden Center combined, that's what they are proposing to you. Um, so on the screen and in your packets, of course, you have the zoning location map, um, the character area, which shows parks and recreation and conservation um, character area, which is affiliated with the floodplain of Sugar Creek. Uh, which has a major impact on this property. And then the aerial, which shows the existing buildings that are there, and some of the outdoor storage and display that is currently being used by the operator. Um, the applicants are proposing no changes to the buildings. They would like to simply reuse them um, in a condition, but fix them up a little bit, <coughs> put in a display area between the buildings. Um, in your packet, of course, is a survey from 2014. Um, and just to show you what was there, this is some pictures that were taken back in March. The squirrel's Nest, this is the front building. Um, a driveway that leads out to Gornto Road. And like we talked about at the work session, this is an access easement that has been there since the 1970s. Um, the applicant's proposing simply to use it the way it has been used for many decades. Um, some existing parking with some, I guess, uh, compressed gravel is the best way to describe it. The applicant is proposing to pay regular parking spaces here to better utilize it um, for their customers. So that would be, I guess, an upgrade to the site from what has been there the past couple of years. Inside the buildings, it is sort of a shopper's um, wonderland to see what you can find and if there's bargains there. Um, there's an awful lot of merchandise that has been here um, for sale. Um, some of the buildings are a little harder to navigate through than others. And then as you get to the outside, things look a little less organized, but there's a lot of outdoor storage. Um, the applicant is proposing to clean all of that up. Um, this is the prior site plan that was approved in 2014 that shows the existing buildings and some new parking spaces and a lot of outdoor storage. And the applicant is presenting you with a different site plan that cleans a lot of that up. But as we described, it shows the two buildings in between would be a patio area that would have patio type items for sale as well as some landscape plants. Um, a turnaround that's to the south of the large building in the south that is required by the fire department so their vehicles can get in and out of the site. And then a small area that would have some bulk storage for mulch and gravel and things of that nature. Um, staff is recommending approval of this in much the same vein as was uh, approved in 2014. What we did is take those conditions from 2014 and condense them into a shorter list, but keeping all the applicable things um, that are still relevant to this property. Um, and those are listed in your packet, and those are eight conditions for you that are found on page number two. Um, at the work session, I had given you the list of what was there in 2014 in terms of conditions and you'll recognize this language is very, very similar. Glad to answer any questions you may have. I got a quick question, Matt. Is it on the existing, uh, on the existing squirrel's nest application, now, is there that fire truck turnaround, or is this something that's new on this request? There is a turnaround of sorts that is there, but um, that applicant did not fully comply with everything in their plan development approval. You may remember, and it's in your packet, there's a lot of time frames 
associated with those. Um, but in effect, their plan development approval has expired. Okay. And, and on this, uh, we're going to upgrade it to a hard surface paving, as you said? Correct. And, uh, was that, was for that the main parking way? area in the driveway. In the driveway, but the, the turnaround will be a gravel application? Turnaround will be as required by the fire marshal. Okay. Um, my guess is they're going to upgrade it and then test it okay. to make sure it will indeed work. And one final question for me. In our last approval list, was there any language in there about uh, putting back in foliage or anything that got removed, or was I just thinking something else? There was, and the applicant back then had done that. Okay. There was to replace a stream buffer along the creek. Um, when we, those pictures from March was from a very large staff uh, visit. I think there were 17 of us that went there, <laughs> representing all the departments, and we... We, we, well, I did not shop, but I think a few people looked around and um, decided not to tell their spouses about that, just for fear. Um, but we gave it a pretty good once-over and looked at everything. Included in that was the city arborist, who was particularly interested in the vegetation, and he was fine with what he saw. Okay, I just, I thought I remember us. Yeah. And I think the vegetation grew back. I'm not convinced it was on purpose. It may have been Mother Nature doing that for him. But there is sufficient vegetation along the stream now. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for Matt? Yes, I have one. Commissioner Gladwin? The updating or upgrading the existing driveway, are you talking about the actual driveway from Toronto? Right, and I think the applicants will address that. Um, there's. The city engineer is going to want improvements at Gornto mm -hmm. to make that a little better, safer intersection. And I know they're wanting to pave driveway by their parking lot so the customers can get in and out. Um, as if you can imagine the type of stores they're wanting to operate, um, they have carts that bring things to people's vehicles. That doesn't work so well in gravel, but on hard surface it will. Um, what makes that a little more complicated is that is not on the subject property. Um, that easement and what looks like part of the subject property along the railroad track is actually someone else's property. Mm -hmm. So there's some discussion involved there. Mm -hmm. um, but the applicant tells me they've got the permission of the owner to proceed with that. So that's good. Okay, well that was actually my concern is that we are putting a condition, we're talking about two-way lane which they may or may not have that with to actually get a proper two-way drive but in any case i just wanted to point that out and i do have one more question is there a, um, a system in the city where PUDs are being monitored for example like one of the conditions here was to in from the 2014 application was to combine the parcels into one i hear that did not happen which surprised me. I, my memory tells me that it had, but I could not find a record of it. Um, it is something that still needs to be done. I do remember a lot of discussion with the surveyor back in 2014 about doing that, and I'm a bit surprised that I can't find it. Um, and that's a simple thing that can be done. But yes, there is a tracking system, and it goes into our GIS as part of the zoning polygon. Um, it references the file number, and it's put in the same data field as conditions of approval. And so anytime we check zoning on the property, we see that, we see the file, and then we can look it up um, digitally in our system and pull up the conditions. But technically, there is not, the, the owner or the applicant is not required to actually provide any information for monitoring purpose. Of the they don't. The it's, it's up to us to remind them. Um, the owner and the applicant are given copies of this a certificate of approval that outlines all of the conditions. Mm -hmm. It's for their records and for ours. Um, things that have deadline dates on it go into a particular file that we keep in our office um, because you can imagine some of these expiration dates are years into the future. Mm -hmm. um, and some of us who may be around a long time might remember it, otherwise mm -hmm. we rewrite it down. Thank you. That's it. Any other questions? You had mentioned the fire hydrant was never put in. All it was the not, and it is in their site plan to do it. They have already gotten the estimates. Um, it's a different fire marshal on board now than what was here in 2014. Um, and I fully expect it to be 
fully install. Okay. Now, I'll address this question to you rather than the owner. I'm just curious, um, is saying outdoor kitchen, is that a working kitchen or just outdoor kitchen to stuff to say? If you could picture this as like an outdoor home or outdoor living center, so it's items that they, you know, for a kitchen out on your patio. It's not preparation. Uh, I don't think so, or a very light preparation, but I'm thinking more grills and tabletop surface. Um, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Commissioners, any more questions for staff? There being none at this time, I will ask anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request to come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? <coughs> My name is Brett Moore, uh, the 805 Smith Briar Drive. Owner of the potential, potential owner of this property. Uh, I've been in business for seven years, operating a proficient pool and landscaping or lawn service incorporated. Actually, um, and uh, we've we've never had a retail location. That's our that's our sole purpose in purchasing this facility is to start offering a retail um, location for people as a one-stop shop for pool, landscape, lawn supply needs. Um, like he said, take the seasons in the pool store, put them together. Plants, uh, fertilizers, irrigation parts, shovel brakes, um, and anything you could you would need for a pool as well. Um, to answer your question on the outdoor kitchen, it, it will be a functional grill, but it will not be used for preparation for food or uh, serving the community or anything of that nature. It would be so more of a production to see it, smell it, feel it, those kind of things for a customer that, that may be wanting to uh, purchase a grill. So, I'm just curious, Brent, is the 6,000 square foot existing building, is that where you want to have your pool supply that people got? No, so the, the existing building is 4,000 square feet. That's going to be approximately 2,000 square feet of, of retail. Um, and then about 2,000 square feet of that will be offices and a kind of a storage room for um, bulk supply chemicals. So it's the 6,000 square foot warehouse um, on the existing building will be used for storage for lawnmowers uh, for our service stuff as well and then overflow of uh, outdoor furniture that, that we may not have all of it on um, display you know just do more stockpile in there for uh, um, just a stockpile of uh, stuff that doesn't need to be in play. Commissioners? Brent, I, I know uh, we've read your letter that this area is part of your growing up, mm -hmm. right? Yes, so you know that this is an area that tends to uh, yeah, I, yeah, I grew up on uh, the corner of Meadowbrook and Gorta. Uh, right. My grandparents' house, I watched the water come in the backyard dozens of times. Right. And I had to move every bit of furniture out of my grandparents' house in 2009. And it took me and people from my church a matter of two hours. Right. So I'm very familiar with it. The uh, flood water does not scare me one bit because you can watch it come in and you can watch it leave. And so it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely nothing that scares me. Uh, I mean, obviously, property value is, is obviously a, a scare, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. Um, One of the questions that came up at the work session was that you'll probably be storing some chlorine for the pools yes, and chemicals for lawn care. Um, what's your plan in the event that there is a flood? How would you prevent that? So, every, I mean, we staff between 15 and 20 something employees at any given day. Um, and to be able to move out of every single piece of inventory out of out of our uh, out of our buildings will take us all of about maybe three hours. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with the floods of any river yeah. um, around here, especially, it doesn't rise two feet in a matter of an hour. Right. Um, so obviously, whenever there is a rising water, I've got money invested in the stuff. I'm going to make sure I get it out. So therefore, it's not going to obviously cause any problems. Um, and so, and we're a lot safer with with the flood than, than we'll say if a tornado hit any other pool store or any other um, chemical plant around here. There's a better chance of it actually doing that than actually flooding our building and causing any chemical leaks of any sort of happen. Not to mention the small amount of chlorine that will actually be put into the water will be none compared to. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I have one more question. 
with regard to the ingress and egress, are you comfortable that you'll always have that way in and way out? Yeah, so we've actually uh, spoke with the, the property owner uh, to the, I don't even know what that would be, um, it's the property that's on CH. Uh, to the south. To the south, and we, we, have, uh, we have considered purchasing that piece of real estate eventually, so that will, would obviously help us, as well as there is a legal uh, easement that is, that is there. We have got a verbal approval for him, whatever we need to do for our access obviously affect uh, better his value of his property so he said to do whatever and then as well as the owner of the property on the corner um, which is currently a liquor store we've gotten verbal permission from them as well now we can add in the, uh, the driveway and um, do any stretching and anything that we may need to do for the buyer obviously great. everybody wants the property to look better in yeah. that whole side of the, the, the area but, so. it's a great project any other questions for our presenter? Just, um, just one, one quick question. Are you, are you familiar with all the conditions that have been recommended by staff? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and you're okay with all of them? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we've been dealing with this battle not for a little while, so we're very familiar. And, uh, and obviously, whatever needs to be done, you know, we're, we're willing to do it. And they've been willing to work with us on timing of everything as well. So. And I also agree with Mr. Rensburg, I think it's a great. Mm -hmm. Great idea you had. Good wish good. you best of luck on it. Thank you. Anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? There being anyone here wishing to speak against this request? Anyone wishing to speak against this request? There being none, commissioners, any discussion list for ask for a motion? Awesome. I will take a motion this time. Mr. Chairman, regardless of 2018-08. Move the commission to accept the staff's recommendation as presented, including their age express conditions. All right, we have a motion. Do I have a second? A second, a second Mr. Gladwin. Any discussion on the motion? The second, there being none, all in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. And that is unanimous, Mr. Carmel 7 0. Matthew, you're doing an outstanding job this evening. We'll let you know that.